Okay, great. Okay, um, thanks for coming. I'm Tom. I'm a teaching associate with this program. Um, and basically today is going to be um, a presentation from Claire and Dan, who are the co-directors of the AMRES. Uh, we have Malak here who's joined us. She's a current student, so she'll be able to answer any kind of student experience specific questions. Um, if, and then after we've got, we've had the presentation, we'll have kind of an unstructured question and answer session. Um, if you've got any questions during the presentation, just pop them in the chat and we'll go through them later. And then once we've done those, we'll have a more freeform discussion. As Dan said, we're going to record all this and send it around later. Um, and that's pretty much it. So uh, I'm going to hand over to, I don't know if it's Claire or Dan speaking first. Me first, I think. You first. Okay. So yeah, today I'm just going to give an overview of what the MRES offers and the timeline of the year. So this, it would be, say, it's a one year full time course, but part time over two years as well. But the timeline I'm going to show is for a one year course. And then the support network that we've got uh, within the, uh, the structure of the MRES to help you know, support you generally throughout the, the, the year. Should we move on, Dan? Next one. Okay, so this is this is the only program of its kind within the UK, um, and the um, the aim of the program is to help you to develop transferable academic and research skills. So we're very much focused on the research project and the um, the taught modules which support that. Um, you can choose from across UCL, uh, so it's a self tailored teaching program um, designed to support the research project. Um, and the research project itself can be selected from the wide range of disciplines that we have at, at UCL Great Ormond Street Institute of Child Health. And these are organised into different research and teaching departments. So we have developmental biology and cancer, developmental neurosciences, genetic and genomic medicine, infection, immunity and inflammation, and population policy and practice. So we have in our research project portfolio, we have projects that span all those different research and teaching departments. But we also have ways, so if there was a project that you were interested in that isn't actually in that portfolio, then there's ways of also being able to develop a project with a potential supervisor, or even if there's a project that you you like the sound of in the in the um, portfolio but it's not quite what you're after then there's ways of being able to to come up with new projects as well so um, I like to think of the Institute as being a sort of mini university in that we cover a lot of different um, type of research topics within it so it has got broad scope to, to to take that research project into whatever direction you want to take it obviously focusing on child health research but within that there is um yeah a broad remit of project. so the learning of outcomes uh, that you'll get from this talk, uh, course is appropriate statistical knowledge that will support your um, project your critical appraisal and to help you design the project uh, help, help you design yeah the uh, the study um, and how to support a research project through appropriate literature search and how to write up the research results the public so, so it would be to a publication and presentation standard so we within the course we have um, training on how to write uh, scientific um, papers but also um, part of the assessment is to present um, a poster of your research as well as your dissertation of your, of your research so there's different elements to help um, you um, yeah, get a good grounding in how to um, communicate your research in different ways and then um, we also sorry back one down <laughs> uh, we also have um, ways of uh, assessing how you can justify and defend your project research because we have a an oral exam a, a viva at the end which um, also helps you to um, just yeah justify your um, your project results in a different way from writing which is an effective um, communication tool. Next slide. So it, the course is set into two core modules. So we have taught elements as well as the research project. So we have two core modules, which is um, a research methodology and statistics taught module. So that gives you, um, and that's quite early on in the course, that's in sort of October, November. I'm not totally sure of the, the timetable yet, but it's usually very early on at the start of the year. Um, so that really helps with this kind of planning of your study design and, and giving you that background that you need in the statistics to, um, to make sure you're doing the right power in your study. And then the other core module is the research project itself, and that's worth 120 credits. So it's a big element of your grade and it um, 
because uh, the whole course is 180 credits, so it takes up a big weighting in the, um, in the in the overall grade. So yeah, those two are the core modules, but then you have a selection of other three other thought modules, and that can be from the range, the entire range of UCL. Um, but we do encourage um, you to, to choose modules which are relevant to your research project or so for example we, we run one at the Institute of Child Health which is understanding research and critical appraisal which we think in especially in this current year where it, you know we're doing a lot more virtual um, teaching we think that that would be a very strong um, you know choice of modules to take um, in helping you um, to write up your project and, um, and give you that, that background knowledge. But yeah, we have other popular choices. We have epidemiology for child health, evidence-based child health, and then also further statistics modules as well. So there's a, there's a big range of modules that you can choose from. Um, and you, yeah, so it's, it's tailor-made for your research project really. So we, when you have enrolled, we then, you then have, I think, uh, three weeks, two or three weeks to decide which modules you want to take and we can, we can work with you to develop those, uh, help you choose those top modules. Next slide. So this is the timeline um, of the year, of, of, the, of the MRES year. So it's a little over a year, really, um, in that it will, you, you can enrol from September. We have our induction at the beginning of October. Um, and then, the, we, so quite early on, you have the research methodology and statistics core talk module. So that happens some, sometime near the end of October, beginning of November. And then um, I've sort of highlighted that the, the taught modules run from November to May. So it depends on which modules you choose of, of which, how your year will actually be split. You may end up having all of your taught modules in the first term, um, and then you can focus on the research project in the second and third term. Um, you know, so it's, it's kind of fashioned as um, with your selection, we, we, we're not really sure how that will work for you. But we have um, a research project formative assessment at the end of February. So this is a way of us being able to gauge, it's not great, it's not, you know, um, it's not making part of your grade, it's just for us to, to give you some external feedback on your project, um, how you're getting on with your supervisor and the, you know, the, how you've picked up the skills that you've acquired in the first term is appropriate for the rest of the year and um, so that's quite a good um, sort of highlighted where the assessments fall, um, the, the research project assessments fall within this year. There will obviously be other assessments that will come from your taught modules but um, again we won't know exactly what they are until you've selected the taught um, you've selected those. Um, so we anticipate that the research project will end sometime in June, um, but obviously that will be dependent on what type of project you have. In some cases that's earlier and sometimes it's later, but again it's the, kind of a guideline. And then the research project dissertation will be submitted at the end of August, usually sometime in August. And we anticipate then of the Viva oral exam will be mid-September. Um, and that's really the end for um, most students is the viva and then you know they finish and they just wait on their grade but there is an opportunity to submit your poster that you've made for your viva um, in the ICH poster competition so um, that's just another way of you being able to present your data to a wider field um, obviously all the entire institute is is presenting posters all, all the students PhD students and master students um, and so that's an opportunity to, to get more feedback on, on and meet some more people in, in, the, in the institute so you're very welcome to come back to that if you wish but officially the the um the assessments and the course is over sometime mid-september um that's it i think to you now dan yep so i'll take over now so i'm just going to talk to you about the support network of vet that would be available to you if you if you did decide to come and do an mres in child health with us um and so i guess it kind of begins at the top so claire and i are co-directors of the the program uh, but aside from us, we also have um, Mona, who is uh, a very experienced tutor, personal tutor, and she will be there and available to give you very useful feedback. Sharon is our administrative, um, administrative support assistant. And then we have uh, a network of teaching associates, um, so postdoctoral researchers that are, are helping us out. And, 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 you know, they're quite close to what the, the position you would be in. So they're quite early career. And so they've recently been through this. And so they've been able to provide you lots of really good advice. And, uh, and Thomas is one of those, as you can see. And we also have Alice and Daniela. Um, aside from 
staff. We also uh, encourage you to get involved with the Microsoft Teams MRS Child Health student group. So you can talk to each other and you can swap notes, uh, discuss how things are going and support each other. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, it could be a melting pot for discussion of ideas uh, and, and, and help each other through the course, which is, which is really fantastic when you can have peer, peer engagement. And even if you're doing very, you know, very different projects, I think it's really useful to have that peer engagement uh, because people with different skills will, you know, will be able to help you with specific problems that you might be having. Um, and aside from that, there is also wider student support uh, through the doctoral schools. So the MRes in child health is a research degree, so it does fall within the, the remit and the responsibility of the UCL doctoral school. And what they can provide you with is ad academic and administrative assistance. Um, so all of the nuts and bolts that you require to help you get through your degree. Uh, there's also uh, the opportunity for lots of professional development, professional personal development uh, to help you gain skills that will you know, help you further your careers. And on top of that, there's also um, personal assistance. So we're talking pastoral care and, and, and uh, the support for you know, yourself. So, you know, colleagues, friends, family, student support and well-being, all of these, all of these different aspects that you'll probably need at some point to help you get through uh, a challenging, uh, but at the same time, rewarding degree. And so really that's all of the, all of the support that is available to you. And, and then just to, to finish off, I just want to iterate something that Claire was talking about um, earlier, which is the breadth of topics that you can really undertake. So here's just an example of the topics uh, of, of, the, of the projects that are being undertaken by the current cohort of students. And so we can see there's, there's a, a wide range of, of topics there. So we've got CAR T cell therapy for um, pediatric glioma, um, we've got understanding the identity of amniotic fluid derived mesenchymal stem cells, um, prognostic value of telemetry EEG in epileptic patients, um, data driven approach to improving identification of neonatal sepsis in low income countries. And so you can see there's a, there's a, there's a whole breadth of topics that you can really get your teeth into, uh, depending on what you want your expertise to become moving forward. Um, and so, you know, there are lots of different techniques and, you know, so T cell therapy techniques, you know, these are very, very cutting edge. Uh, and that's within the setting of neuroscience, for example. Um, you know, there's also looking at amniotic fluid derived mesenchymal stem cells. And so, you know, there's, there's maternal health. Um, and then there's also population health in terms of data driven approach to improving identification of neonatal sepsis. And so there's a whole broad scope for you to get your teeth into. So, I, I, you know, I think it's a really good degree to come and do to really get some proper research skills uh, and also to be able to have, you know, almost carte blanche on, on what it is you do uh, to give you, you know, the most flexibility in terms of what you do. Uh, and, you know, if you want to discuss, you know, this further in terms of, you know, what it's like to do a research project, then Malak is here to answer your questions. And indeed, we would like you to, to, to pose some questions now if you, if you have any. And we'll be very, very happy to answer those.